to the Paint Creek Center for the Arts, Art and Apples ribbon cutting ceremony to kick off this event. So this is the 56th year for the Art and Apples Festival. It's ranked consistently in the top 50 for best find and art design shows for, by Sunshine Artist Magazine, and over 250 artists from across the nation come to participate and display their craft. And 80,000 people attend this event over the weekend. That is amazing. So every year, the first weekend after Labor Day, this event steeped in rich history, graces our community and provides one of the many special amenities for making living here so rich and rewarding. Someone who knows exactly how rich and rewarding it is to live here, please give it up for Oakland County's own Carolyn Krause. What do you have for us, Carolyn? Thank you so much. I'm here from Oakland County Executive Dave Coulter's office. And I bring good wishes from the executive, and uh, we are here to recognize and celebrate the 56th year of Arts and Apples Festival. My favorite, as David mentioned, I'm from Rochester Hills, and very happy to be with you today. So congratulations, Sean, from Dave Coulter. Awesome. Thanks, Carolyn. But if you would now give a warm welcome to the mayor of Rochester, Stuart Bixon. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. This is a great event. Um, this has become a signature event, I would say, in Metro Detroit. Um, it is huge, and I think it really shows three things for Rochester. One, it shows there's a lot of things going on in Rochester, and we like it that way with our DDA, with events going on in our parks. It, this is a great event. Second, it really shows our park and our park system and our trail system. That is, we, we are very proud of that. There's a lot of great things going on here. And third, just the people who come downtown. It's such a friendly place. It's clean, it's nice, it's well run. The police and fire do a great job. So really, downtown Rochester is a great place. Thank you everybody for coming. Congratulations on the work you've done and welcome everybody, thank you. Let me introduce to you Mayor Pro Tem, Rochester Hills City Council President, Ryan Deal. Hey, Ryan. Well, we know it's fall because here we are at Arts and Apples. That is the, uh, that is the official or unofficial start to fall for us here in the Rochester area. And my family and I could not be more excited. Uh, we're so happy to see we got great weather. We have a, this is a great venue. It's a great park. And uh, this is just one of those things that brings our communities together. And it's that kind of, it's these kind of events that build the wonderful sense of community that we have here. So I just want to say, on behalf of all of our 75,000 residents of the city of Rochester Hills, welcome back and happy 56th to the Arts and Apples Festival. Awesome. Thank you, President Deal. So at this time, may I introduce to you a man with a rich history with this event as the PCCA board president back in 2015 when it celebrated its 50th anniversary, Rochester Regional Chamber Board Chair Vince Matina. <laughs> Sean, on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Rochester Regional Chamber and the Chamber Foundation, I'd like to congratulate you on 56 years at our, in, of the Art and Apples. It's no secret that in order to make a community strong, we need to have art and culture as part of it that brings people down into the community, this event with thousands of people that are coming in, you've really introduced them to the city of Rochester and Rochester Hills in this area, which is awesome for not only the, the city itself, but really for the merchants that are around. Having spent 10 years on the board, I realize how important this event is to PCCA and really to the support of the organization to keep it strong. So I'd like to recognize you with a plaque from the Chamber of Commerce. Wish you good luck with this event. On to 50, 60, 70 more. Congratulations. Way to go, Sean. You know this event could not be put on with the generous contributions from our sponsors. This year's presenting sponsor for Genesis Credit Union, please give a warm welcome to Teresa Doan. Teresa. Thanks, everybody. So how many of you have been to the festival before? Just, yeah. So you know that this is one of the best festivals that's held anywhere. So we're just really thrilled to be a partner, um, love everything that's happening here, love what's going on in Rochester, and uh, really just keeping it short, we're happy to be here. Thanks, Teresa. 
and last but certainly not least, please welcome BCCA Executive Director, Sean Hayes. Sean. Well, thank you everybody very much for being here. As many of you know, this is my first year doing the Art and Apples Festival, and this is the best community to be a part of. Very welcoming, everybody has been fantastic. Um, the chamber, the city, both cities, everybody that we've worked with has been absolutely amazing. I do wanna give a big shout out because um, we have a full team putting on this festival. So aside from just myself, we have Jenny Stacy, Alana Stoltz, Julia Feltz, and Nicole Bush. So let's give a round of applause for each of them. As a few people here have already mentioned, there's a lot of great festivals in Southeast Michigan, and I've been to many, I've been part of many, but this is truly the best one around. Um, it's fantastic, the whole community comes together, there's so much to offer. Um, and as Dave mentioned, uh, Paint Creek Center for the Arts, uh, a lot of people know us for Art and Apples, but there's a lot more to the organization than that. We offer classes throughout the year, uh, we do exhibitions, galleries, we have an art market for local artists, so a lot of different opportunities to get involved. Um, not just today, but all throughout the year. But again, everybody's here for today. This is a fantastic event. We've got fantastic weather today. And so let's everybody just enjoy the day. Thank you so much for being here. All right, so you know the routine. It wouldn't be a ribbon cutting ceremony without an actual ribbon cutting. So if I may have a giant piece of ribbon and some even larger scissors. All right, we're gonna count this down. Everybody ready? Looking good, smiling. Three, two, one. Go! Uh, I started building costumes around 10 years ago and uh, growing up, mom always made us build our own Halloween costumes. So uh, during the Comic-Con craze of the early 2000s, uh, I really delved into that and was helping a lot of friends, meeting a lot of people. And uh, eventually people started to compensate you for some of that work. And it was cool every few months to, to have money to spend around the holidays on friends and family. So a uh, logical step was like, how do I take all these talents and skills focus them and then uh, also achieve one of my dreams which was starting uh, my own business. My particular profession is called a strap worker. So much like a cobbler would make boots and shoes, a strap worker deals with a lot of long, thin, uh, narrow pieces of strapping. Much of what we have here is centered around belts and belt accessories. So that's what you're going to see when you step into Lambert leather. Wrist work, neck wear is not all also out of the question because it's made from longer, uh, narrower straps. With strap working, a lot of what you get into is production work, but with those little hand tools, uh, you can just, the sky is the limit on the shape and the imprint and really apply whatever's in your brain onto your piece of leather. Her name is Carrie Bledecki. It's my sister's business, and unfortunately she can be here today. I'm her biggest fan, so <laughs> you can ask me about any of these pieces. These are actually really cool. It's for watering. So you take a dish, fill it with water, and then you can carry it over your plants. And if you put your thumb on it, it holds the water, take it off. She started churning these bud vases, and the glaze is just incredible. So these are all um, different types of clay. They're all handmade pottery. Each piece is unique. There are no two alike. These aren't like, you don't make one and then make 10. You make one and each one she has to, to make it, build the pottery. It might take her a week to two weeks for them to dry. Then she fires them, chooses the glaze. And she's just, she's so incredibly talented. love music so it's about you know everything that I have is just about, about music uh, instruments and you know flowers and fruit you know kind of still life I've been doing this show probably it's probably about my tenth time doing this show wonderful wonderful show you know every time I come here this is my favorite I always go and get me a bag of popcorn 
we make this, these stone and shell and button birdhouses and bird feeders. It's a three week process from start to finish to make one of them. It's, we're doing multiples at a time, but there's a lot of drying times and everything. We go from a pile of raw wood all the way through. Um, it gets stained, it gets all the things put on it cleared. So it, it's a lot of process, a lot of time and involved in that sort of thing. So sometimes it's a real place, sometimes it's unlike the um, ones over here, is they're, they're more of an imaginary, it's more of fairy tale. I started the business 59 years ago. It takes a long time. You first have to cut it, and my son cuts. And then you have to make it, you know, so that and it comes out wrong side out. Then you have to turn it. Then you have to put the face on. Then you have to stuff it. Then you have to sew the, sew, sew the hole up where you stuff it. Because we make them every day. We bring a lot of pleasure to a lot of children. Her name is Stomper, and she does have an attitude. She gets her foot in her mouth a lot. She stares. I tell her it's rude. The dragon's another big seller. The red dragon is the Chinese symbol of good luck. I made the six-footer for a man to carry over his shoulder in the Renaissance parade, then I cut it down to this size. Oh. For little children. So I don't cute. read fire, it burns your tongue. <laughs> 